welcome back to another YouTube video. We're so happy, really extra happy that you're taking time to watch this video today. But first, I'm Rachel. And I'm Jessica. We're the Certified Occupational Therapy Assistants with Harkla. And today we are going to talk all about sensory strategies for adults. <laughs> <laughs> so we know that a lot of our viewers here, our parents, our adults, are neurodivergent and what we have learned being therapists in the field for nine years, nine years now, wow, um, we have learned that sensory processing challenges, sensory processing disorder, it's, it's highly genetic and oftentimes if you are dealing with a child who has sensory concerns, once you learn that's what's going on, you realize, oh, I have a lot of these things too. And it's really beneficial to once you understand your child to understand yourself, or if you don't have kids, just understanding your sensory needs in general, it's really beneficial to understand them. Yes. If you are unsure kind of what we're talking about here, make sure you go listen or watch our videos on sensory processing disorder, sensory seeking, sensory avoiding. We have a lot of free resources on these topics so that you can learn more and better understand mm -hmm. them. And then we also do have a free checklist that we will link below in the description that can help you identify your own personal sensory preferences. So what types of sensory input do you seek out more to feel more regulated? And what types of sensory activities do you tend to avoid because they cause you more overstimulation. It's a really great resource to help you just better understand your own sensory system. So before you watch any more, pause and take that checklist and then come back and finish the video. Okay. All right. So now that you've got your checklist filled out, you are like, whoa, having these big aha moments. You're like, wow, I have some sensory things going on. This is a topic very near and dear to my heart because I definitely have my own sensory processing quirks and sensory processing challenges. We all do. As we all do. Mine have definitely changed and increased after pregnancy. That was a big traumatic event for my nervous system and I am navigating my own sensory quirks. And Jessica over here is pretty much integrated at all times Good. of the day Talk and good. just thriving. <laughs> I use a lot of the sensory strategies that we're going to talk about today. I use them on a daily basis. Yes, me too. Yes. So I have to. Yeah, but we all have to, right? So if you are finding that you're anxious or unhappy or tired a lot of the time, then dig into the nervous system, dig into your sensory preferences, try some of these strategies and see if they're beneficial. So we're going to break this video up into two different sections. The first one will be if you're more on the sensory avoidance side, and then the second section will be more on the sensory craving or under responsive side. So sensory avoidance or sensory sensitivity means that you don't need as much sensory input as someone else. So maybe too much visual input causes you to feel overstimulated or too much auditory input causes you to feel anxious or too much movement makes you feel sick, like motion sickness. Then you're more on the sensory sensitivity side and some of the strategies that we're about to dive into might be beneficial. So the first strategy we want you to participate in is to exercise and to move your body. One of the best therapies that you can do is to get up and exercise and move. Whether you walk or run or ride your bike or walk on the elliptical, whatever type of movement you can do, it will be beneficial to your nervous system, not only because a lot of that movement provides proprioceptive input or heavy work, which is very organizing and grounding for the nervous system, but it's also really good for your heart and your neurotransmitters. So exercise and move your body and you will feel night and day different. 
I think that also adding in some of that movement outdoors, right? So if you can mm-hmm. do some of those exercises outdoors in the natural lighting is also beneficial. Absolutely. Going along with what Rachel said, let's talk about some proprioceptive or heavy work strategies that you can add into your day. Like Rachel said, proprioception is calming to the nervous system. So if you are sensitive to certain types of sensory input, if you're overstimulated or overwhelmed, proprioception can be your number one go-to strategy. So things like lifting heavy weights or sucking a thick smoothie through a small straw or chewing gum. Even if you're sitting at the desk and you're starting to feel overwhelmed, you can do some chair push-ups, some deep breathing with your eyes closed. You could stand up and do some wall push-ups. Really anything that is heavy work to your muscles or using weighted products like a weighted blanket or a weighted lap pad while you're sitting at the desk. Those types of activities and strategies can be really calming for your nervous system. The next tip is regarding tactile sensitivity. If your clothes are extremely uncomfortable, if your tag in your shirt or your seam in your socks are bothering you, you have to wear a certain texture of pants every day, otherwise you're gonna lose your mind, we wanna focus on some tactile strategies. So one thing that you can do is to grab a dry brush or a surgical brush or a washcloth, a dry washcloth, and you can stimulate your skin. So just rub it all over your body, your front, your back, and your entire body from head to toe multiple times a day, aim for four times a day, and just notice how your skin feels. You have millions of receptors on your skin. It's your largest sensory system, and so brushing it and desensitizing it can be very helpful. The next strategy relates to the visual system, and if you're discovering that too much visual input causes you to feel overwhelmed or anxious, a strategy here would be to declutter and decrease the amount of visual input that you receive every day. So if you spend a lot of time working at a desk, make sure the desk is cleaned off and decluttered, has minimal items on it. Make sure your workspace around you is simple, you have things put away in the closet or bins so that you can't see them. Maybe you have calming colors on the wall, you dim the lights or you turn off the fluorescent lights and you just use natural lighting. So taking a look at your environment and seeing where you can reduce the visual clutter can be super helpful. The next strategy is regarding the auditory system and reducing that auditory clutter, if you will. I don't know if you're like me, but competing background noises, multiple sounds, the radio's too loud, the TV's too loud, someone's trying to talk to me, it drives me batty. So one thing that I have learned that's helped me is to use noise-canceling headphones. And I used these for the first time on the airplane the other day, and I kid you not, I was like, oh, exhale. It, even when I put them on at the end of the day, after it's been a crazy day, it's just exhale and I just feel this sense of relief. So using noise canceling headphones um, throughout the day, during activities or during events that are too loud, um, just using them as a regulation tool at the end of the day can be really beneficial to just give your nervous system a little, a little brain break. Mm-hmm. The next strategy is to take deep breaths throughout your day. Right? So oftentimes what I know for myself is if I am thinking about something or if I'm starting to feel anxious or I feel like I'm running late or any of those things where I'm starting to kind of get amped up a little bit, I notice that I hold my breath or I'm breathing very shallowly and this can cause me to feel more overstimulated. So Mm -hmm. stopping, noticing that it's happening and taking really deep, full breaths for 30 seconds, slow and deep, this can really help to calm your nervous system and help you just come back down instead of being way up here. I know it sounds so simple. It is simple. But honestly, when's the last time you stopped and took a deep breath? Mm -hmm. Probably it's been a while. So try that strategy and notice how you feel. The next one is regarding your, again, proprioceptive system, your oral system, but using sensory foods, as we like to call them, to organize your nervous system. So things like chewy snacks, crunchy snacks, resistive foods, carrots, beef jerky, 
um, crackers, things that provide resistance to your jaw. You have a lot of proprioceptive receptors in your jaw and that can be very calming to the nervous system as well. You could even drink your coffee through a really small coffee straw and that provides some oral input that is organizing and calming to the nervous system. So think about your sensory snacks, pack them in your bag whenever you're you know, out and about, feeling uncomfortable, feeling anxious. Pack those snacks, pack your chewing gum, pack your mints, things to suck on, chew on, and uh, it'll really organize the nervous system. The next one is to prioritize getting outside first thing in the morning, no sunglasses, and getting some of that natural light. We've heard a lot of talk recently about how this really jump starts our day and helps our circadian rhythm get into a good routine and good rhythm to help us sleep at night and it has to do with the different chemicals that are released throughout the day. But if you can prioritize getting outside first thing in the morning, even if it's cloudy out without sunglasses, that is going to just jumpstart your day. Do it as you go on a walk and take some deep breaths while you're doing it. Combine some of these strategies together and you will feel so much more organized. The last one here for our sensory avoiders is to start practicing yoga, meditation, mindfulness. There's apps that you can use, there's YouTube videos you can watch to learn yoga, but yoga is so organizing to the nervous system, not only because it provides proprioceptive input, it stretches the body, it's, it's calming, it's just time that you can spend with yourself. That might be easy, it might be difficult, depending, but it's good for you to bring that awareness to what's happening inside your body. Why do you feel so uncomfortable by these sensations? How can you connect with what's going on inside and to work through that? And yoga is a great way to do that. Those are our strategies for anyone who's struggling with sensory sensitivities or avoidance. Now we're gonna jump into some strategies for our sensory under responders or our sensory cravers. So if you find that you seek out certain types of sensory input, you love to move and run and jump, or you seek out more noise or more visual input, or you seek out strong flavored foods or any of these senses, maybe you did the checklist and you found that you seek out certain types of input, the next couple of strategies are for you. And you might notice that some of the strategies are the same or similar mm -hmm. as the ones for our sensory sensitivity folks. Yep. So the first one is to move and exercise. And we know that vestibular input is very beneficial for an organized nervous system. So keeping in mind head position changes, things like spinning and swinging and doing windmills, going upside down, somersaults. You're not necessarily gonna do a somersault on the floor at I mean, your office. You could. You, you definitely could, but think about how you can get your head into different positions because oftentimes with sensory seeking, specifically seeking vestibular input, you want more of that movement and maybe your job doesn't necessarily allow that. So think about ways that you can add movement breaks into your routine that include head position changes because that is what stimulates that vestibular input and wakes us up. Just keep in mind to follow that input with proprioception because vestibular input can be very arousing and a very alerting. So we want to make sure we sandwich that with deep pressure and chair push-ups and wall push-ups and big hugs and chewing gums. We want to wake up the body with that vestibular input and then organize it with the proprioceptive input. Another strategy is to find a high intensity workout routine that you enjoy that you can do on a regular basis to get a lot of that vestibular and proprioceptive input. So things like a cycling class or playing soccer with your friends or basketball with your friends, something that's high intensity where you're getting your heart pumping, you're moving quickly, um, and that's really gonna feed your sensory system and give you what your sensory system needs to feel organized. Going along with that, you can join a sports team, like a rec league softball team or volleyball or hiking, something that involves your community, you're held accountable. Oftentimes with sensory seekers, we're a little bit flaky and we don't really follow through with some of the things that we're doing. Um, by no fault of our own, it's just the way that our nervous system works and processes things. So kind of having that accountability with a team can be, or a group can be really helpful. That's such a good point. 
Another strategy would be to look at how much time you are on the screen and to maybe use some blue light blocking glasses, maybe decrease the amount of times you're on the screen if possible. Make sure you're taking frequent breaks between screens. So if you do a lot of computer work, set your timer for 45 to 50 minutes take a 10 minute break off the screen where you go get some movement, you do some head position changes for five to 10 minutes before you come back to your computer. That's gonna help feed your sensory system what it needs in between all of that screen time. I will also add, look at your environment at your office. Maybe you can get a standing desk, maybe you have a home office and you could get one of those little like treadmills that go under the desk or a foot fidget that goes under your chair, maybe a on a therapy ball or a tea stool or a wiggle seat. Think about how you can modify your, your environment that you're working at to give you more input as well. So similar to our sensory avoiders, we wanna recommend those different food textures, those different sensory snacks, things like chewy, crunchy, resistive foods, even changing the temperature of your food, warm or cold can be helpful for the nervous system. Eating sour foods or spicy foods or really intensely flavored foods can be beneficial for those seekers of maybe more oral or proprioceptive input. The next one is also a strategy we gave to our sensory avoiders and that is to get outside first thing in the morning without sunglasses get that natural light go for a walk or a run or go you know do your sporting event with your your friends first thing in the morning but really that strategy along with like the crunchy foods and sensory foods those are strategies for pretty much anyone because they feed the nervous system the sensory system in such beneficial ways whether you avoid or seek out sensory input one more time, we want to remind you to get movement breaks, take brain breaks consistently throughout the day, whether that's just going upside down, whether that's swinging outside on the porch swing, whether that's taking a walk outside of your office, maybe it's sitting outside during lunch. Focus on movement breaks, brain breaks consistently every 45 minutes during the day and see if that meets that sensory threshold. That is so high for you. The next strategy is to use essential oils and get a diffuser or maybe a scrunchie on your wrist that you can put some drops of essential oils on and use those different scents throughout the day to help you achieve the arousal level that you want. So if you need to be more alert and awake, use a scent like orange or grapefruit that can help wake your brain up a little bit. If it's time to wind down and go to bed, use some calming scents that help your brain and your body feel more calm. We do have a podcast episode, All Things Sensory Podcast, where we talk about essential oils. So we will link that in the description if you're curious to learn more. The last one we're gonna recommend is to add music into your routine as well, especially during maybe challenging or non-preferred tasks, putting on music to kind of keep your brain awake and focused and maybe distracted a little bit, um, especially if we're struggling with some of that ADHD type behavior as well. Having that music on in the background can give your brain what it's craving, keeping it busy while you can focus on more of those mundane, non-preferred tasks. We gave you a lot of really great ideas today. If you feel a little bit overwhelmed because we gave you so much information, that's fine. We understand. Take one of the strategies we provided and implement it into the routine consistently for a week or two before you try adding on another one. Yep. If you haven't already subscribed to our YouTube channel, you can do so now. And we do drop a new YouTube video every Tuesday, so be on the lookout for that. And definitely make sure you're following our podcast as well. We share tons of activities and recommendations and interviews and just all sorts of sensory goodness on our podcast, All Things Sensory by Harkla. And you can listen on any podcast app that you have. If you are concerned about your child's ability to get through their day or their attention, make sure you talk to your pediatrician and ask for an occupational th therapy evaluation. In-person therapy is always our go-to. It's possibly one of the best things. So if you are concerned, make sure you dig into that. Yeah. With that, make sure you like this video and leave a comment below if this was helpful. And we will plan on chatting with you next week. How's my sweatshirt? It's good. Yep.
very distressed. Can you see the tag? Maybe I should just hide the tag a little bit. 